I'm here at the India Mobile Congress 2025 and as a tech enthusiast, we are always excited about what's happening in the tech world. But here at IMC, it's an amalgamation of tech, auto, enterprise, cloud and most importantly, the real drivers of that change happen to be the telcos. And just to understand what the larger picture is, I thought we should have a conversation with someone very special, General Kocher from the COAI. What a pleasure to have you on the show. The pleasure is mine. So it's great to always connect with you at some of these conferences. But what I want to understand was this is a new venue and we're here at the India Mobile Congress, massive in its first year at this venue. And we're seeing a lot of the telcos, my take being that it's them reinventing the wheel with AI and tech big time. How are you viewing this as an industry body now? Is the innovation there to see? Has IMC really leveled up? IMC has grown by leaps and bounds. You see over the last nine years, the growth has been phenomenal. Right, from, uh, from being a small startup, now it has become the Asia's largest uh, congregation yes. for, for telecom. And we have ambitions of growing globally. And I'm, I'm sure those are not uh, uh, fancy ambitions. Those are doable and mm -hmm. that will happen. And in terms of us seeing the top three telcos over here and their massive booths, each year we see a bunch of innovations. This time I'm seeing a lot of AI, sir. Is that certainly uh, a pressure that when the winds are blowing the AI way? Is that a certain sense of pressure that the telcos are feeling? And as an industry body, you sense, which is perceptible with, uh, with the, the top telcos in the country. Telcos at the end of the day are a business. And their business, business, businesses worth their salt don't come under pressure. Mm -hmm. So if they're adopting AI, there has to be value to that. It has to add value to their business. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, that is what they're looking at. They're looking at improving efficiencies. They're looking at reducing cost. They're looking at bringing better services to the consumer. Mm -hmm. And that is why AI is coming. AI is no longer a fancy word for them. Okay. That part is over. When everybody was talking about AI. Now I think it has started, uh, you know, uh, crucifying. It's coming to the bare bones where it is really required. And that is where telcos are looking at AI. Uh, and we are looking at both generative AI and we are looking also at uh, embedded AI. So could you tell me a little bit more about some of these technologies that telcos are actually adopting? I've seen AI-driven uh, cloud architecture, for, uh, spam detection, fraud detection, a bunch of things that were showcased here. But some of those top innovations that you think from the telco side, which can be a game changer for the larger country. From uh, Let me start by, from the subscriber end, if you permit, right? Because Finally, we are serving the subscriber, Absolutely. right? For a citizen, the biggest problem today is fraud and scams over digital networks, over digi digital systems. Now, telcos have taken it on, among themselves to stop this digital fraud as much as they can. Mm -hmm. But telcos are not the only uh, actors in the digital space. There are uh, many others. and. All of them have to get together to stop this as much as is possible. It's not possible to absolutely stop it. it you can reduce it to a trickle, but it'll always remain there. So government has taken a lot of steps along with the telcos. Yeah. They've introduced 1600 series, they've introduced suffixes, the uh, unsolicited calls are being stopped. So that has been going on from yes. the government side. Yes. From the telco side, they've brought in AI. And the, with AI, they've started uh, labeling calls and messages which are spam. Right. And that goes to a subscriber. Then it's an informed choice for the subscriber whether he takes that or not. Right. Right. And th they've gone a step further now. They have started blocking calls and messages and sites which are actually spam and fraud. So th this is something that they're using AI for, for the subscriber's point of view. From the network's point of view, they are optimizing their resources. Like you said, AI for cloud optimization. Yes. So the, our traffic patterns are such that they don't remain the same all 24 hours. So there, there is a requirement of optimizing resources, mm -hmm. including energy. Mm -hmm. So we do graceful shutdown, and then uh, when, the, when the traffic grows again, the, the, it again comes up. Right. So that sort of thing is being done now through AI. It was being done earlier manually, right. but manually is a very tedious process. And you know what's interesting, sir, is that interoperability is a term which is not alien to the telco side, yeah. especially here in India. And we have certain mechanisms in terms of how the industry has developed over the last few years. 
But in the world of AI and tech, that is one of the hottest conversations. When you're talking about LLMs and different uh, gen AI solutions, how interoperable are they? Is that key? Is that, is that some sort of transference or, or learning that can be had for both industries? I'll put it in, I will take it up in two parts. Okay. One is the algorithm. Algorithm has to be interoperable, otherwise you're not deriving any benefit out of AI. Right. Second is the learning models. They have to be specific for the region for which they are working. So one is specific for India, unless we have a model which is, uh, we have a database which is on Indian data, Indian right. patterns. Right. The algorithm will give false returns. But if we have an algorithm which works only on Indian system, that also is not of much use. Correct. So interoperability is there, standardization is there. They have to cater to a standardized, uh, you know, some standard body has to say, these mm -hmm. are the standards you have to follow. And then they have to be traceable. If AI has taken a decision, it should be explainable why did they take a decision. Correct. And there has to be a veto power of a human. That cannot, that cannot be overcome, not as of now. Another hot topic and a conversation, General Kochar, is all about some of the emerging technologies that come with satellite. Globally, you have Starlink, Project Kuiper here in India, Geo is working in the space as well, low Earth orbit, medium Earth orbit. I just want to understand, as an industry body, if I was to just get a mothership sort of an explanation of, is it more of a strategy of defense now when it comes to satellite or more of attack? and to take it head on when it comes to Indian telcos and how this changes the industry forever. It is easier to explain by looking at the geography of India. The teledensity in urban areas is 125 percent, right? That means they are very well connected terrestrially. Yes. When you go to rural areas, it is 58 percent. Scope for growth. Telcos want to invest money in terrestrial networks and fill up that gap. But the cost versus returns, the gap is too high. Right. So that is progressing, but at a slower rate. Now, if you bring in satellite, that becomes a complementary technology. Okay. Okay, that helps the telcos reach where they couldn't have reached otherwise, either commercially or because of the physical constraints. So tel the, I see satellite as a complementary technology for right. backhaul, right? As far as the subscriber is concerned, he will be served in the manner he has always been served. Mm -hmm. So it is not a competing technology, it is a complementary technology. So it's interesting because you've been doing a, a stellar job at the CUAI for the last five years nearly. And the last five years have been monumental for India and the world. Because we went through a COVID world, now it's a post-COVID world, 2020 to 2025, where work from anywhere has become sort of acceptable for a lot of companies, startups as well. And we're seeing the startup revolution also expand, where a lot of people are moving back uh, to their hometowns and villages and cities and still be active in the tech ecosystem. Do you think that's been a, a, a key, well, asset of uh, what the telcos have been doing and working on strongly to deliver that connectivity? So whether it's the telcos or the government, nobody anticipated the good effects of COVID. The good thing was that telecom kept the economy running. And with that came the concept of work from home. Many ed tech firms started teaching from home. Yes. Right? FinTech companies came in bringing in pay from home. So telecom became essential and everybody realized the potential of telecom. So it, COVID became a catalyst. What would have happened otherwise in 10 years in a natural course? Yeah. Happened in two years. Okay? And that has been recognized. The minister now says telecom is a value added horizontal. Right. And we are going towards making it into an essential service. Now, this is, this is the state in which telecom has advanced in the last five years. Right? And the government is cognizant of this change. So, in, in the lifespan of every technology, one way of evolution is gradual. Right. Second is that you get a catalyst somewhere down the line and you get a kick up and then you scale yeah. higher heights. This yeah. is what has happened to telecom. General Kochar, what an absolute pleasure. It's been so insightful to chat with you. And uh, I wish you the best for the rest of the India Mobile Congress. Thank you and, and enjoy IMC 25. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you.